uniform acceleration. Again mentioned in a previous video, in this course we are only going to deal with situations where we can at least assume that there are sections of a constant acceleration, meaning the velocity is increasing by the same amount each second. Uh, if we go to make a velocity time graph, what that means is that I can uh, have the velocity increasing every second. So let's just uh, create a little situation here. Let's say that uh, that's meters per second, and let's make that east, for lack of a better direction. Zero, one, two, three. And what I, so for a positive acceleration, I could say, let's say I started from rest, and I'm increasing by two every, every second. So the first one is two, and the next one in another second, it goes from two to four, and four to six. And that's a positive acceleration because my acceleration uh, because my velocities are getting bigger in the positive direction. And what that means then is that my if I make a velocity time graph of this, let's make that one, two, three, and then let's just make this each square one. So oh, yeah, no, let's go. That'd be two, four, six. Then what that means is every time I go over one, I go up two, and I get up four, and then I'm up to six. So each, each step I take over, I move up two. So I step over one and I move up two. And that would be a positive acceleration of two meters per second squared. That isn't the only way to get a positive acceleration. Remember that positives and negatives, especially in motion, typically refer to direction. So let's say, for example, that I deal with a different situation. Here I have an object that has an initial velocity in what I'm going to consider to be the negative direction. This guy is starting with a velocity of negative uh, 6 meters per second. We're going to keep it the same because that's the easiest thing to do. And what it's actually going to do is slow down until it stops. In that situation, my velocity time graph, well, I'm going to actually put the axis up here. is going to look a little bit different. Here it's going to start down at negative 6 and then each second it's going to increase by 2 until it comes back up to 0. So that'll be 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds. This is time in seconds. This guy's meters, oh both of these guys are meters per second east, meters per second east. So here I start at negative 6 and I come up to 1, 2, 3. And I think what you can see from this is it's still a straight line graph and it still has a positive slope and still so it's still a positive acceleration. But here this was an object speeding up. and this was an object slowing down. So the positive or negative on the acceleration doesn't necessarily mean speeding up or slowing down. It depends on its relationship to the initial velocity. Now let's do the same two cases, but here we're going to deal with a negative acceleration. So again, if I start with my times, 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm just using 1, 2, 3 seconds. You could use really a lot of different things. Um, you could use a lot of different things to get a, um, to show this. You know, it could be hours, it could be, you know, 0, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. I'm just keeping it as simple as possible. In this time, let's make this object in meters per second going, let's call the positive direction here north. So if I start from rest and, I have, and I'm dealing with a negative acceleration, then what that means is this should be declining 
each second. And if it's going to be a uniform acceleration, it should be declining by the same amount. I went from 0 to negative 3, or down 3, then down another 3, then down another 3. And that gets me uh, to negative 9 meters per second after those 3 seconds. On a graph, what that looks like... is I started from zero and then after one second I'm down to negative three and after two seconds I'm down to negative six and after three seconds I'm down to negative nine and here I can see that for every one second I move over I go down negative three meters per second and so I get a negative acceleration. Again, getting our head out of that, um, that common mistake, negative acceleration in this case, acceleration equals negative 3 meters per second squared, actually is speeding up. Here I've defined positive as north, so when I say speeding up and I have a negative acceleration, that means that I'm going more south, or I'm speeding up in the southerly direction. Alternatively, I can try and deal with that last situation. Here, I'm going to be going at some speed, let's say uh, negative 10 meters per second. And then let's make it the same acceleration. So I'll go to negative 7, uh, 3 down from that, negative 4, and 3 down from that. Actually, hold on, I don't. I'm messing that up. I want to be going 10 meters per second in the positive direction, and so that'll reduce to 7, reduce to 4, and reduce to 1. There's no negatives here. So this is what we typically think of when we think of a negative acceleration. We started with some initial positive velocity. Let's make each two, four, six, eight. I'm going to make this 10 up here. Then uh, that's two, four, that's six, that's eight. Did I screw that up? Yep. Let's make that. 10 right there. And so I started up here, and after one second I was down to 7, and after two seconds I was down to 4, and after three seconds I was down to 1. Oh, that's where I made my mistake. There we go. Put the time down there, and then that all works. And here we can see again a negative acceleration, but this time the negative acceleration is doing what you would typically expect it to be doing, which is uh, causing the object with the initial positive velocity to slow down. Every time I go over one second, I go down negative three. So I have a slope or an acceleration of negative three meters per second squared. Here we are slowing down. Okay. To translate these into position time graphs can be kind of tricky. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on a situation here where the acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity. So they could both be positives. Or they could both be negatives. What this means in both of these cases is that if the acceleration is positive and the velocity is positive, then this object is accelerating towards the direction it's already moving, or these are speeding up. That's a speeding up situation.
Now let's try and keep this simple and let's say that our acceleration here is one meter per second and our velocity is going to start at one meter per second. What that means is that I'm just going to do zero, one, two, three. I might need four. We'll just start with zero, one, two, three and figure out our positions. So let's say we start from a position of zero. And in the first one second, our object is going at a speed of one meter per second. And so it's going to travel a distance of one meter. In our second second, our speed is now two meters per second. It's sped up. And that means that this object is going to travel a distance of four or two meters per second. So that ends up being one plus two for a total of three meters that it's changed its position now. In the third second, traveling at three meter or yeah, three meters per second, it will go from three plus an additional three to six meters. Uh, let's do one more. Four seconds, traveling at four meters per second. Now it's starting at six meters. It's moving four meters in that second for ten meters. So what that means then is that these numbers are one, three, six, and ten. Let's see what that looks like if we plot that. I'm going to give myself some more space to work with here. So my time, let's call that one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. You know what, I'm going to spread those out even more because I want to be able to see it really well. So let's call that one second, let's call that two seconds, let's call that three seconds, and let's call that four seconds. And then my position has to go up to ten. Let's see if there's ten boxes here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's ten right there. Okay? And I'm just going to mark them off every second. Six, and eight, and I didn't screw it up this time. Okay, so I start at zero, zero. And then after one second, I've gone one meter. And after two seconds, I've gone three meters. And after three seconds, I've gone six meters. And after four seconds, I've gone ten meters. And if we look, what we're starting to form here is a parabola. This is sort of hard to sketch. In a couple more lessons, we're going to learn that this parabola actually has an equation where it is a relationship between d being proportional to t squared. But for now, we can just see that the shape is uh, a parabola, and let's notice that this parabola is concave up. And it starts at zero, or the vertex, and we can see, oops, <laughs> starts with the slope that's relatively flat near the vertex, and it's speeding up to a greater slope. Now we remember that the slope of the position time graph is the speed, and so really what we're recognizing here is that we start with a speed uh, that's low, and we're moving up to a speed that's high. Okay, let's look at a similar situation but this time with a negative acceleration and negative velocity. Here we have uh, our time and we're going to have our displacement. I thought uh, going up to four worked fairly well, so I'll do that again. Let's make our velocity this time uh, negative one meter per second and our acceleration equal to negative one meter per second squared same numbers as last time, it's going to keep it fairly simple. Uh, we'll start with a position of zero, 
And then what we'll recognize is that in the first second, the object is going to be traveling with a speed of negative one meter per second. I like the way I wrote that last time. In the first second, that means it'll go a distance of negative one meter. This is all going to work at the same as last time. In the second second, so this is really from one to two seconds, right? It's traveling with a speed of two meters per second, which means it's going to be at negative one. It's going to go another two meters in the negative direction, which means it's going to go to negative three meters. When we're going from two to three seconds, we have a negative three meter per second speed, which means it goes from negative three plus it's going to go three more meters south or whatever we're considering negative to be, which means it would be negative six meters. And finally, from three to four seconds, it's going to be going negative four meters per second, which means it's going to go from negative six, but it's going to go another four meters in that direction for negative ten meters. Now, I'm being a little, um, I'm not being perfect with this because really in the first second, it's not going to be going zero meters per second. It's not going to be going one meters per second. It's going to be going somewhere in between those two. I've done some things here to make this math a little bit easier and it's, it still illustrates the same um, relationship. So it's not actually standing in the way of it being you know, right, it just, um, it just makes it a little bit simpler. Really, this shouldn't probably be one meter per second, it should be 0.5, and this shouldn't be two, it should be uh, 1.5, because if you think about it, in the first second, it starts at zero and gets up to one meter per second. It's really going at half, but all those halves are gonna make this math ugly, so I'm just ignoring them. Now, if I want to make this graph, all my positions are negative. So I'm just going to put my time axis way up here. And again, I'm going to spread it out. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is my negative 10 meter spot. And then that makes each one of these uh, represent one meter. So we start at zero, zero, go to one, 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 negative one, two, negative three, three, negative six, and four, negative ten. What we can see here is we're getting that same parabolic shape or the same quadratic. And this time we'll notice that it's opening down. But same, we start with a low slope to a large slope, which represents the fact that we're speeding up. And here we can recognize that opening down happened in the negative acceleration situation. And if we go back and look at this, where we said it was concave up or opening up, we notice that that was in the positive acceleration. So it seems like when we have a constant acceleration, we're getting a quadratic for our position time graph. We can see that we go from a low slope to a high slope when we're speeding up either way, whether it's low or large. Um, and we can see that the way that the parabola is opening up is corresponding to the overall type of acceleration. So that's a whole lot of things about what the graphs of uniform acceleration are going to look like. I think we better take a break here and we'll start the next video where we're dealing with objects that are slowing down, have velocity in one direction and acceleration in the other.